Hello, hello. Good evening, you guys. My Facebook family and friends. I hope you're having a good evening. I hope you had a great day. Hope all is well. I hope all is well. I have a um a great um guest coming on tonight. Well I have a let me take that back. I have great guests every time I come on here. Um every individual um has a great story to tell. And this train is not stopping. Just waiting for him to, our guest for tonight, to um, get on. Again, um, just waiting for him to come on. And while we are waiting, Just um, trying to get him on. Okay. There we go. Hello. Hello. Okay, we're still trying to bring him on camera. See the live or nothing like yeah, we see it. Okay. There you are. I think we got it now. Oh, this technology, boy, I tell you. Is something I'm not sure if it comes in like on your page as mm -hmm. the you know like the invitation. I have no idea. Me neither. I don't get it. So, at all. um, we're gonna start off the conversation. What I always do is the intro of why we're doing this. Okay. So I say that I believe in the six degrees of separation. I believe that you're always one person, one step, one advice from being where you need to be. Mm -hmm. um, I would say last week, um, God, God gave it to gave me. It to one me. person, mm -hmm. one step, to, one um, advice from being where you need to be. Okay, it started delaying for some odd reason. Okay, you good now? I'm good. I just hear you twice. <laughs> yeah, I was like, where did that come from? So... It was um, take what you already are and put it out there. I'm always a connector. I'm always, somebody's always asking me, do you know who do this? Or um, how did you cope with this? Or what advice can you give for this? So this is why we're doing this. Um, everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to say this, usually after I say all that spiel, I'm like, I'll tell you how I met the person. 
well, in this case, I never met you. <laughs> um, ironically, for some odd reason, we were already Facebook friends. And then, lo and behold, the other night, I'm watching 2B TV with my husband, and we're watching a movie, and I look, <laughs> and I said, I've seen this person before. Where I seen him at? Mm -hmm. And he said it again. I said, well, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I have an idea, but I'm not sure. So I looked up the movie, and, you know, when you go into the cast, it tells right. you the name. I said, oh, my God, I'm friends <laughs> with him on Facebook. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, let me let me inbox him. Like, I, I listen, I'm sitting here watching your movie. That's so in up. my eyes, you're already famous. Like, right. I don't even know. <laughs> so on Facebook, he is DW Bass, right? Bass, yep. Bass. And so I'm looking at the profile, and it says you're a drummer? Yep. Yep. I'm a drummer at um, Living Waters Church in uh, Detroit, Michigan. That's where um, Pastor Jay Moss is the pastor. As in related to the Clark? Yes. Yes. Wow. Yep. That is interesting. Mm-hmm. So I'm all looking like, okay, um, I think he needs to come on and tell his story. Now, most of the people that I've um, brought on so far have been from Detroit. Oh, okay. Because that's where we're from. That's what's up. And so I thought, you know, here is a guy who is um, on the screen. Black movies. Mm-hmm. Got paid for what he's doing. Thank God. <laughs> and I remember seeing some, if I'm not mistaken, and I think that's how I connected on Facebook with you. Were you the one that was with Lexi when she was doing all this? Oh yep. my God. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost Enforcer series. On YouTube. Yeah. Sitting in a church acting silly. Acting a plum fool. Yep. That was me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now I know why I friended you on Facebook. Cause I saw the um the show with Lexi. Yeah. On YouTube. That's what's up. <laughs> and I was like, who is that? They are funny. And that's how I um got on, you know, on um finding out who Lexi was. Mm -hmm. on youtube small world yep so with all that being said um how did you get into acting um, or, and playing the drums <clears throat> i got in um well playing the drums first i got in drums um as a kid you know i was just a kid in church um one of the drummers left the church that uh we were growing up in and um, I was always on the front row uh, playing the drum, playing the air drums like kids, you know, just on the front mm -hmm. row, just. So they was like, just go play the drums. And that's how I started playing the drums. Um, then like, of course, getting older, I started to take it seriously once we, we actually ended up leaving that church and uh, going to uh, Church of God in Christ in Pontiac. And uh, at that point, I kind of got serious. It was about 12, 13, started uh, getting a little serious with it. And then it just evolved over the years. And I met people, um, joined the uh, Grady Emanuel um, Institutional Church of God in Christ, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, and First Lady mm -hmm. Karen Clark Sheard. Um, and been friends with Pastor J for a long time for a very long time. And then when he started his ministry three years ago, he hit me up, you know, I had a need. I said, I'm down. So I've been uh, playing there for the last three years consistently. Um, and as far as acting goes, that um, is something that I've always wanted to do. Um, but through um, just, I guess, life, because of my, grand my grandparents were 
um, my granddad was in the factory. Um, and okay. then my grandmother, she was a social worker. So they okay. felt like working those kind of jobs provided. They didn't okay. care about no dreams. They was like, yeah, that's, that's nice and good, but you got to take care of your family as a man. This right. is what you need to do. You need to get a job and you need to work in the plant. So I, um, later on in my life, around 2009 is when I actually started um, doing the acting thing because I started to have some um, health issues that caused me to go blind. So I could not work um, and not being able to work. I was like, well, let me just see, you know, that we started getting the incentive in Detroit and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, let me see how far I could get at least until I'm able to go back to work. Mm -hmm. And it just stair steps is one thing led to another one uh, relationship led to another. Um, and I just started to go deeper and deeper into what I loved, which is acting. And um, I, met a man, I met a guy named Dwayne Davis um, while I was on tour. And he was the one that connected me with Lexi for the Lexi television series. And uh, we, we did that. And like I said, I just kind of like stair-stepped it and made it, made it work. Because in Detroit, mm -hmm. it's real hard to make it, make things work here. Um, but wow. I was able to do that. And then, um, you know, meeting people through school, because I did go to school. I went to uh, the Motion Picture Institute um, for acting for film. And um, I also went to, and I'm currently at, at OCC, Oakland Community College, uh, for mm -hmm. their theater program. Um, and that, um, I met some filmmakers and people that were like doing films. And I started to do uh, some films. Uh, recently, at the top of this year, I got signed in Chicago with an, uh, with a Guild Talent Agency. And uh, so far with them, I just booked um, a film called Strictly Business that I'll be going to do next week. And um, I was uh, on Chicago Fire. Um, I think it was called 51's First Bail. It was the season mm -hmm. finale uh, before COVID like hit real hard. Um, wow. So, so I caught you at a good time, huh? I guess so. <laughs> wow. I didn't even this this is why I feel like this is going to be um a major platform because of the knowledge that if you don't open your mouth and talk, no one will know this. Mm -hmm. No one. Um I had no clue um of the things that you're saying. I had no clue. Um and even the fact that uh, people have a, a story to tell, uh, as we call it, testimony in the church, mm -hmm. where um, you testify basically of God's goodness, how the doors open, how um, one thing led to another, even if we don't say, well, you know, if, if this sickness never happened, you know, mm -hmm. with being blind, you know, I would have never took an avenue to go here or there. Yeah. Now, as we can see, you're not blind now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yep. Uh, five surgeries later, here I am. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's a, a testament in itself because, you know, a lot of people um, go under the knife and they don't they don't come back yeah. or they don't have um, a great recovery. As mm -hmm. we can see, you're uh, pursuing a dream that you had and in my opinion you know you're successful at that um of course we all can get better you know doors are open from here again it was i would say in my like weird that i'm sitting up here watching tubi um tv if y'all don't pay attention to that tubi has a lot of um african-american movies mm -hmm. like movies that you might not see on netflix or um, all these other streaming yep. um, places. And my husband likes the movies that you play in because he watches them back back to back. 
um, of different um, movies like that. Um, we got uh, told from someone else at his job about Tubi. I never, you know, paid no attention to it. And he was talking about the movie, um, what, I want to say McGraw. McGraw yeah. Avenue. McGraw something Avenue. like that. That was here in Detroit. Yeah. Yeah, in Detroit. So that started him wanting to watch you know, those type of movies or Detroit-based movies and things of that nature. And from there, lo and behold, I see a familiar face not knowing. I'm like, I've seen this face before. Mm -hmm. Where have I seen it? And when I looked at the casting of it, I saw the name and then it clicked for me. Like, oh my God, I'm already friends with him on Facebook. I have to <laughs> let him know that your movie is out here. Like, That's not that up. you didn't know that the movie was out here. Well, a lot of times I don't. Just to let you know, a lot somebody. Of times I don't. Because, like, um, wow. we'll, do, we'll do the film. Um, and I don't look at, I don't watch my, my films. So, like, unless we premiere them, okay. I don't see them. So, like, mm -hmm. I'll forget about it or I just won't think about it, trying to get to the next one. And next right. thing I know, I'm getting hit like, hey, man, is this you? Is this you? Hey, bro, is this you? And I'm like, oh, that kind of feel kind of good. You know what I'm saying? That people was actually. Yeah, you, you have that uh, distinct look. And then, you know, if you go past, you know, how your character was in the movie, it's like, <laughs> wait a minute. I've seen and then it, it, I mean, I instantly inboxed you like, listen, I am sitting here watching your movie <laughs> as we speak. And you like, man, that's, that's what's up. That's, you know, I'm like, I would have never thought. And again, you know, we put out here to um, social media because mm -hmm. that's another avenue. I would have never connected with you. Yeah. Um, and at this time where we're putting information out here, we putting basically free advertisement out here, look up your movies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like this, if we don't support our own, who will? Right. And right. so, um, I'm, I'm elated to, you know, eventually maybe one day I actually meet you in person, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. uh, just to be here to actually have a conversation and at the moment before you take off and blow up. I'm putting that in the atmosphere. <laughs> Come on. Um, I was able to, you know, sit down and talk to you because, like, I'm sitting up here like, y'all just don't know. Um, and I tell people all the time now, like, you just don't know how how many dope people you are mm -hmm. around in your yeah. circle. Yeah. 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 Um, and I'm hoping that more people see this. So if you're on, please like and share the video. Um, for the drummer that's in church mm -hmm. and feel like I'm stuck at just being a musician. Come on now. Oh, God. And, and that my gifts, you know, as we always say, the gifts will make room for them. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. here you are making gifts, your gifts making room for you, not just in music, but you're actually able to pursue your dreams. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. So I know that you are a family man as well. Yes. Yes, I am. So how is that, you know, as we say, balancing life out? Because, you know, you have your ups and downs, your struggles and all of that. How is your family taking what you're doing? Like, Well, my family, um, my family is supportive. But uh, being transparent and truthful, um, it wasn't always... Um, a support factor, like even family in okay. general. Some people in my family and in um, the areas that I grew up in, they had to see it first. You know what I'm saying? So uh, when they finally started to see what everybody else saw, then they like, oh, then they want to get aboard, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And 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 that's kind of hard being being that person uh, to be like accepting of like a lot of um a lot of a lot of support i'll say um it, it's hard because they people didn't so long now you are okay. and it's like okay now i don't know how to accept that i don't know if you like being fake because are you real? you're right yeah right. you know what i'm saying it's like hard but then once once that wall is broken down 
um, is it's like a feeling uh, like you never feel before, never felt before, because it's like it's nothing like the support of your family. You right. know what I'm saying? People will support you. People that don't know you will support you like crazy. But mm -hmm. it's always the family that's like that kills or touches the heart the hardest. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like when it when you have that support from the family, you feel like you can do anything. And um I think we we coming across that and turning that corner now. Uh, my my immediate family has always been supportive. You know, I have um, a wife and three daughters. Uh, daughter uh, 17, three, and one. Um, wow. So, uh, they all, they all love, you know, their dad, of course. Uh, and wow. their support is just like none other. Daddy is just A1 right now. You know, I'm A1. Right. You know, <laughs> that, that, that was going to like subway so into my next thing. Like, okay, so how is it? the temperament of the household were all females. So oh we always have this stigma of, you know, the man like, listen here, I got to go. It's too much estrogen in this house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so how is it for you, you know, um, with the wife and three daughters? Well, fortunately for me, um, we know how to, uh, well, I ain't going to say that. I'll say, we had to learn how to <clears throat> I am here, but mm -hmm. I have to be able to practice. I have to be able to, you know, get off into this side so I can do this mm -hmm. so y'all can be proud of me. You know what I'm saying? So it 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 wasn't really until the beginning of the pandemic. Um, that space and time was was seen from everybody, me included. Okay. Like everybody needed that space and time. And uh, thank God I had a situation where like uh, my wife, she had to go um, check on her parents. Her parents stayed, you know, two hours away. So she went to go check on them a couple weeks at a time during the pandemic. So that gave us that space for me to like do what I needed to do at home since everything now um, is self taped So all my auditions and stuff like that, I had to tape at home. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? I had the space and opportunity to do that. They would come back and it was just a back and forth thing. And then um, unfortunately her dad ended up having a stroke. So she's been out wow. that way with the kids for about three and a half months. Um, and then I just go out there. You know, I go out there when I don't have anything to do as far as like auditions and stuff like that. I just go out there and be with them. When I need to come back, I come back. So it's okay. it's kind of like they understood that, um, well, you know, at times daddy has got to go, go so mm -hmm. he can do what he's doing on TV. So we have to be acclimated to that kind of lifestyle. And through okay. the pandemic, we was able to like get that ball rolling where they know, okay, if daddy's gone for two weeks, you know, out of town because he has to do this, he is going to be back. You know what I'm saying? And, okay. Um, they get it. They know, you know, and FaceTime is our best friend, you know, my, to, to the point where my one-year-old, you know, she'll call me and she'll hug the phone. She'll kiss the phone, Aww. you know, like she's kissing me. And it's just making everything that you have accessible to you work to your benefit as opposed to just having it. Okay. So like, like I, I make everything work like FaceTime. That's a, uh -huh. a big asset to us. Um, and all of that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> yeah, we just make it work. Just make it work. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So what about, um, thank you. You too. Um, what about the whole, um, you know, like sometimes when the dynamic is changed a little bit, you know, we have those moments where, uh, you know, kids want to act out mm -hmm. and, uh, 
or they feel some type of way. And I know, you know, we we understand a lot of kids sometimes they know, but at the same time they want to test the waters. Do your mm-hmm. daughters do that? Well, my three year old, we call her a three major. That's what we call her. Because sometimes mm-hmm. she tries to test the waters a little bit and um, you know, being away sometimes she'll say uh when she gets in trouble or she can't get her way she'll mm-hmm. say well i'm going to my daddy house I'm, I'm sick of this i'm going to stay with my dad my dad needs me so i'm going uh-huh. to my dad's house you know so we have to like reinforce you know this is not dad's house this is still right, our right. house you know right. we still have to enforce that uh, my 17 year old is in uh, a class all by herself um, uh-huh. you know, this is senior year everything right. is a test so you right. know, it's, it's just a matter of me uh, when I am here, making my okay. presence known and right. letting her know, you know what I'm saying, that, hey, just because I'm gone, that don't mean I'm not able to get here. Right, so, right. You know, yes. it's, we had to reinforce all of that all over again. And just keeping the consistency of it. Uh, for me, it, it's all about consistency. If you're consistent, then you know everybody will get it you know and they'll just okay. fall everything will fall into place if you're consistent so um are we training up um future drummers and musicians singers actors what are we doing me me personally i want them to do any and everything they want to do um my 17 year old she is it's a little different with her because now with her being older, you got to implement things as far as grades being the primary um, concern. So um, as long as her grades is good, I'll go broke trying to do whatever I need to do so she can do what she wants to do. Her thing is dance. She really wants to be a dancer. So um, okay. we're looking at um, different schools she's done give, give, she's given me to look at. Um, to see about her going off to a dance school. Um, I recently told her to watch, you know, how serious, you know, the performing arts area is because it's not just about dancing when you're doing it now. It's about dancing, acting, and singing. So, you know, I had to, you know, let her know that, you know, yes, I'm your dad, but I actually am connected with this stuff. So, you know, it's not just about what you did. Cause she was actually on one of the YouTube um, episodes with me. So um, with Lexi <clears throat> and I'm like, it, it's not just about that. That's one aspect. Right. What you want to do is a whole nother beast. Whole nother uh, you know and I'm, I'm glad you said that. Now I know someone mm-hmm. um, that I went to high school with and his daughter just did well she was in performing arts and and when i say the girl is bad she's Mm -hmm. bad i don't know offhand what school she went to Mm -hmm. but um she just did an audition to be a pistons a piston detroit pistons dancer Mm -hmm. and i have a cousin that used to be a detroit pistons dancer that's what's up so Again, from intro, I said that you are six degrees of separation. You're one person away. Mm -hmm. So after this, you know, I can inbox you and give you, you know, the information or whatever for you to find out maybe that school where they Mm -hmm. attended might help your daughter. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So here is a, a prime example of what we've been talking about. Yeah. Uh, and you have you have no idea of, you know, who knows who. Right, um, right. And, of course, the favor of God, wherever you want to go, you speak those things as though they were. And, yes, yep. it will happen. It definitely will happen. Um, that w- it will happen. So I'm excited about that part. So what's going on with the middle child and the baby? Well, the middle child, uh, Frozen is her best friend, Frozen, Frozen okay. 1, Frozen 2. Um, and now uh, my uh, one-year-old is mesmerized by Jingle Jangle. So, like, yes. performing arts is definitely very, very prevalent in, in my household uh, okay. and with my kids. Um, okay. My, um, my wife, now my, my oldest daughter is from another previous relationship. 
my wife, she's a gospel. middle and um last child definitely my last <laughs> i'm thinking that they're going to veer off into singing too um okay I, that's what i would push but okay. i definitely got my uh middle child she got a drum set in my room just like me when i go okay. in there to practice she gets on her drum set i get on mine and we just go for it um wow so whatever they want to do i'm I'm just that open with my kids because, um, especially because it wasn't there for me. You know what I'm saying? I right. didn't have that that support. You know, so I <laughs> want to make sure my kids know that whatever you want to do in life is attainable, and I'm behind you 100. percent And that's that's good. Um, coming from a, a dynamic where my dad was my best friend. And my dad pushed me in my first wrestling match was with yeah. my dad. Um, my first uh, football in my hand, a basketball in my hand was from my dad. Yeah. So um, to push beyond what's um, feminine, what's, you know, the stereotype, yeah. my dad let me be me. And, yeah. um, I loved him because he let me be me. Um, it wasn't uh, the stigma, you know, education is first before you do anything. Exactly. But he allowed me to explore whatever I wanted to um, and come to find out in high school, well, I've been playing sports all my life, but in high school, every season that was possible, I was playing something. Yeah. And that becomes, you know, the health, you know, better health. It would be um, being the camaraderie, knowing mm -hmm. what a team feels like, um, understanding what sportsmanship was like, being mm -hmm. a leader. All these things came from sports as well yeah. as the creative side because I'm a writer. Okay. So he was like, gung-ho, gung go shoot for the stars, whatever That's you want. Right. Um, let's do that. And then that becomes that relationship as a grown woman mm -hmm. that dad has always been here. Dad taught me what I should have and what I should look for in the man that I say, you know, yeah. I want to spend the rest of my life with. So mm -hmm. the presence that you have, um, with them now, they will always have forever. Yeah. yeah. So, um, kudos to you, kudos to your wife for um, what she's doing. Um, I know for a fact that it's not an easy task um, taking care of, especially your family members, yeah. um, when something has, you know, um, and I had to do that with my dad who was, um, he had kidney failure for 18 years. The last mm -hmm. five years of his life, he had no kidneys at all. So um, to help the day by day, you know, mm -hmm. surviving that and, you know, it, it takes a toll on you when you don't have the whole support system because it's yeah. just, you know, picking up and moving and, yeah. you know, that takes a toll on your body, Definitely. let alone having children and a husband. Yikes. Yeah. It's definitely a, a hard, rocking a hard place. Definitely. Yes. A hard so. Place. Um, I have another question. Okay. So when we talk about learning your lines, how in the world do you learn your lines and not mess up? <laughs> well, um, it's, um, initially it's about repetition, um, okay. repetition and making it make sense. Um, I have a very, very unorthodox way of um, learning all of the stuff I need to learn now, um, more so than before, because a lot of times I'll get roles that um, are comedic. So with comedic um, lines, sometimes they give you the leeway to change different things. Okay. So um, like with the Lexi show, all of that was improv. Like everything we did on that tell. show was improv. Like, so like they just hit record and we just went. 
for it. Okay. You know, and then coming over into some of the films that I did, like, um, like the one you saw, um, that I was given some leeway in <laughs> to do, okay. you know, whatever. And there's another one um, called Child Support that um, is out now that everybody is liking. That, I got leeway to do some stuff, but it was a challenge because I got the script on, um, I believe it was Friday morning. I got the script on Friday morning to film the courtroom scenes for child support that Saturday morning. So it was challenging for me because a lot of times, like I said, I didn't have, um, I didn't have to like memorize everything word for word, but now I just break it down. Once you break it down and learn one part at a time, don't do too much um, okay. and make it fun. Like me, I can't do it if it's not fun. So okay. a lot of times I'm in the house making my neighbors think I am plum nuts because I'm over here laughing at myself, dying okay. like it's like four or five people in here trying to talk out my lines like I'm talking okay. to different people so that I can remember mm -hmm. it so that when I get on set, it's just already in me. So okay. like I said, re repetition is like a cornerstone for learning lines. But as long as you make it fun and you don't try not to do too much at one time and just like be easy. Like once you start thinking about when you have to do it, like getting it Friday, having to do it Saturday. If I would have let anxiety get to me, it wouldn't, I wouldn't, it wouldn't happen. They would have recast. Wow. <laughs> um, have you ever had that happen before? Um, recasting or know anybody who, who had to get recasted? I've seen it. I've seen it happen. And I made a point at that not being me. Okay. Like I, I made a point at that not being me. If I, if I get hired to do something, um, for me, I'm either going to do it to the point where you can't hire nobody else. Okay. Or I'm going to do exactly what you want me to do and be the easiest person to work with, because I never want to have the reputation of being that person that you can't work with because they don't know their lines or they just hard to work with because their attitude is wrong. So like for me, uh, maintaining a positive attitude and being easy to work with coming in before time is on time for me. Right, um, right. And like, like I said, like being on it to the point where either you cannot hire nobody else or it just okay. won't be right if I don't do it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, as far as the business side of it, do you um go in? with the agent or you try to do everything on your own before i got with guild talent i was doing everything on my own i didn't feel like i was um at a point where i needed an agent okay um until i started wanting to do more you know and okay. it wasn't it wasn't that um i didn't want I, it wasn't like more like as in i want to do more films i wanted to do more as in another level Okay. Um, so, um, I did some research and found out Detroit wasn't it. And then I made my way to Chicago because that's what I couldn't afford. You know, I couldn't afford to move to LA or, um, Atlanta, you know, especially with a family. And then I promised my daughter, my oldest, that I would not leave here until she graduated. So okay. for me, um, going to, um, Chicago was the next step. And, um, even with that, um, I'm, I'm still at Liberty to um do it myself as in okay um stuff i get from detroit i'm still able to like talk to people myself and uh, get that taken care of as opposed to getting a, a, a agent just for me like i don't i still don't have one just for me i have an agency see but okay. i don't have an agent so okay wow and the again this is information um, for those who are trying to open the door for um, acting. Mm -hmm. I had no clue. I am ignorant. Um, I would have thought that 
agency, agency meant agent. Like, okay, yeah. are you focusedly on one person or um, if I get a role, it goes to the agency and be like, okay, um, you can have this. I think this is good for you. Mm-hmm. Um, yes or no. Or because I'm part of the agency, um, I got to do what you say and try it out at least. Well, sometimes or, it just depends on what the contract says. Okay. Um, like uh, my contract with Guild Talent, um, I'm, I'm, I'm isolated to them as far as talent agencies in Chicago. However, I am still with the I group in Detroit. So, you know what I'm saying? I can still work um, with uh, I group if they give me something like a commercial or something like that. I can still do it and don't have to report it to I group. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, agent, agent, like a personal agent would be somebody like um, in the Detroit a- area. His name is John. Thomas, I want to, I don't, I think that's how you say his name. John Thomas, he's an agent. Um, okay, let me stop you right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna tell you, I know him personally. He was oh, yeah? my neighbor around the corner. Of, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is hilarious. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 He's, yes. he's an agent oh, for gosh. a lot of friends of mine. I got a lot of friends that are uh, with him and they're, that's their agent. Um, he's okay. not an, he's not connected to an agency. He's his own agency. Yeah, so, he's you know his own, saying? yes. His own <clears throat> so that, that would be considered an agent that I don't have, you know what I'm okay. saying? Um, and I just don't feel like I'm there yet. You know what I'm saying? Other people was like, man, you need a team now, bro. You need a team, you need to get you a team together. Like, I'm not there yet. When I'm there yeah. and can pay them, <laughs> yeah. Then I'll get them, you know. So, uh, yeah, it's business wise. Thank God I went to uh, the Motion Picture Institute, uh, MPI. Okay. I went to um, OCC and was able to take the classes with the uh, instructors that I had because they definitely let me know business wise what to look for what, for, what to look okay. out for uh because out here they don't tell you nothing like when you get out here right in detroit um i'm just being real in detroit is is hard because everybody is trying to make it right so you know what i'm saying everybody is competition no matter what you do when you do it who you doing it with everybody is still competition so the business side of things tend to lax tend to be very lax you know where if you're working with some people they don't want you to work with these people or you can't work with these people and work with these people because these people got problems with those people's right right, you're like well i'm just trying to be an artist you know i'm just trying to work and they're like yeah but you connected to cuz and that you know, yeah. And business wise, they'll be like, "Well, you know, we just, you know, business wise, we just it doesn't connect, Fit. so we yes, just can't right. can't do it." You know, so for me, it's 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 imperative that you know, even if you got somebody else taking care of it for you. Okay, you gotta know. And my best teacher is experience, like hands on, like hands on okay. experience is my best teacher. So, um. Yeah. Wow, that that's amazing. Cause, um, like I said, I know that. Well, the agency, his business, that's not his real name. But, mm-hmm. however, um, I I was like, well, I want to ask. You know, I want to do this, <laughs> or you know, he does. Um, uh, it's not ad lib. Uh, voiceovers. Yeah. And he was like, well, I'm like, well, I I want you to be my agent. He was like, no, I don't do. Yeah. Mixed bit, you know, business, business with and friends. Personal. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> but I just, I said, but I know you, right? You know, we, no. Well, put me, said, put me with somebody. Then. Put on, yeah. He be like, <laughs> John, like, Johnny, you, put me with somebody, <laughs> sir. I said somebody. He like, no. Like, oh, you just, like, you don't okay. have no faith. You ain't got no faith, Johnny. That's what it is. We ain't got the faith, Johnny. 
he he just yeah he he's another ball game in his, in itself. <laughs> but I I'm so you know like I said this you you have pointed out at least three or four things tonight of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, who if not talking to you? How would I have known you know somebody I grew up with? First of mm-hmm. all, two. Your daughter is going into basically dancing. I know somebody, Mm -hmm. you know, that could help her or steer her in the right direction. Um, I mean, it's so much stuff you didn't say tonight. Like, okay, I get it, God. I get it. I I get it. Yeah, I see. I get it. So um, it was something else I had to say. What was it? I'm I'm so excited. (laughs) You just don't understand. Um, what was it? Oh, I know what it was. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Jingle Jangle, right? Mm -hmm. So I watched that last weekend. I was very impressed with the movie. Very. I I love musicals anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, but what if Mr. Talbert, Mm -hmm. that's David E. Talbert, if for all right. those in the world who don't know that who that is, mm-hmm. um, decided, hey, I've seen some of your work, and I want to, um, what do you call it, auditioning, right? Audition mm-hmm. um, for a part, and it it causes for, I'm not sure where he's at. Is he in Atlanta LA. too? L.A. Oh, he's in L.A. Mm-hmm. Um, I need you to come out to L.A. for at least two months, you know, maybe several reads or, you know, you working with other people to see if you, you know, you're all mashed together and I need you to stay out here. Um, what do you say to a, a David Talbert? Like, you know, I do have a family. Um, I do have my own, you know, dynamics at home or situations at home. I don't know if I can do the whole two months. What, what, what would he say, or what, what needs to be said? Well, to um, still... <clears throat> if you if you go to a David Tower and you say that, then uh, you're fi- you're you, you're not getting the job. It's not happening. Okay. They'd be like, oh, okay. Well, you know, you. That's great. Um, so it, it's really up to you. Um, to have that um, dynamic taken care of. I, I'm always consistently thinking about the what ifs. You know, what if this happened? What if that happened? You know, t- tomorrow, you know, what if I get called to go to LA? Do I have the means set aside um, so I, to okay. go, you know what I'm saying, to LA if I need to? You know, so like every now and then, like right now, I have uh, a United Airlines flight that I can use for a year. That's just out there, just in case, okay. you know what I'm saying? Right, just right. in case I got it or need it, um, got that. And then, like I said, prepping for the what ifs. Like I keep things set aside just in case I might have to get myself a room. Like next week when I go to Chicago, if they don't take care of it and I got to be down there for a couple of days. Okay. You need your, you need to find somewhere to stay. You know what I'm saying? So right, right. I'm always making sure all of that stuff is taken care of. So if they do ask me, it's just a yes. Like if David called me today and said, I need you to fly out tomorrow. Right. (laughs) I'm out of here. (laughs) I'm gone. David. That that is good. You know, I'm out of here. Right. That that is good. (laughs) Because I didn't know. And of course, I'm really into um, who did what when Mm -hmm. it comes to the the screenplays, the the movies, and I, of course, I knew David Talbert from the plays first yeah. before actual movies, and the man is good. Oh yeah, the man is actually. I don't think he get as much credit as he should exactly. um, when it comes to um, his um, creativity and his art. Yeah, and so you know. Well, we almost been talking for an hour, which I usually give people an hour. But I, I'm i going to say speaking those things as though they were with you will be a household name. Oh, yes. I receive it, too. A household it. name, not only, you know, representing Detroit or just in general to see somebody um, make it in this world where 
it can be hard or yeah. it can be to the point where it's um um disappointing frustrated uh knowing that you're good mm -hmm. and all you're looking for is a chance all you're looking yeah. for is you know i want to pursue this do i sit this down did i miss it did i make it and here it is we have somebody a gym mm -hmm. in the city of detroit repping us on the screen mm -hmm. as well as um musically on the drums where michigan is well known for musicians mm -hmm. and their singers and to be with um jay moss is not just a somebody you know mm -hmm. he i mean he comes from a well-known family yeah and for you to be able to um play for that church that's awesome in itself mm -hmm. so i'm i'm elated to be able to um share your story even though i never met you in person i feel like i already know you, you and know. um for you to um take the time out and I caught you right before. Ain't no telling. We might be at the uh like, remember when? Right. You know, right, we right. had <laughs> remember when right. late at night I was watching this movie and here it is. I'm like, I know that face. Where do I know him from? And then yep. sitting here, I saw you years ago with Lexi. Mm -hmm. That's where it first began. And I didn't know you then. Mm -hmm. But because that's a, a testament to who you are. You were good enough to make me laugh to find out who you were. That's what's up. Let me That's say that one up. more time. That's what's up. You were so good at what you were doing. Yes, sir. That <sighs> you made me laugh. Oh, and yeah. I had to find out who you were. That's what's up. That's how I, I connected with you on Facebook. Oh, yes. Years later, fast forward, here we go again. I'm watching the movie. <laughs> And he fast across my uh, TV. Was you a crackhead in the movie? Yep, I was a crackhead in that one. That was uh, uh, what was that? Come on. I don't know. I have to look at the messenger. However, I, I was a crackhead in that one. Yep. <clears throat> I'm like, that's a bad, funny crackhead. Like, wait yeah. a minute, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen that face before. And here it is. I'm scrolling through. I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm a person. I need to know who this is. Come to find out, you are yep. in my list on Facebook. And I said, God, here it is. I have the opportunity to talk to somebody that I've never met in person, but he left an impression on me so well that I had to know who he is. That's so, awesome. world, why you here? Please like and share the video and yeah. you will see um check out tubi movies mm -hmm. um check out his name darius right yep it's darius or dw bass please look him up follow him on facebook are you on instagram yep dw bass too well instagram is actor dw bass too now please follow him this is somebody um not just the city of Detroit, not just um the state of Michigan. That's but right. Just put, because put of Pontiac who he in there is. too. Yeah, all of that. In. Good stuff. Pontiac by way of Detroit. Um, Come on. I I need you guys to support him, um, because I know he's gonna make it. I know he's gonna make his family proud. Um, he's he's a um a star that we need to make sure um city city lights. Amen. Right. Somebody. Amen. Amen. Amen twice. Amen, so, amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for the time you have uh, shared with me. And of course, um, you know, before you get off, um, super, super huge. I'm going to say that one more time. Before you get super, super huge, <laughs> um, I definitely get you on again to um, say, see what's up, you know, what's the updates on what's going on. And maybe between now and then, I'll see you on the screen again. You got it. You got it. So um, I will bid you farewell. Like and share the video. And um, I will talk to you soon. You got it. Thank you so much for having me on the show. No problem. I appreciate it. All right. Talk to you later. Yep. All right. Bye.